Hello, hi all of you. I'm Mrs. Arnold and today we are going to be reading from Ms. Ella. And let me bring my article up and share it with you. Our article today is a law article. Give me one second to set my screen up. And it is entitled Student activism traces its roots back to 1968 East LA walkouts. Here's a picture you can see. This is Mr. Rodriguez, I think his name is Rodriguez. Joe Rodriguez of Garfield High School. And so um, what we are going to do is after we complete our reading section, we're going to go over to our quiz um, in our activity section. And we have an eight question quiz. I will give you guys some time to um, drop your answer after I reread over every question. Give you some time to either pause the video or write your answer. And then we will collectively answer each question. To you. And um, then we will go on to uh, our exit question. And for our exit question, I ask that you um, take out a sheet of paper now and a pen or pencil, have that handy for the exit question. You should be provided a worksheet for your quiz. Um, call the staff if by, for some reason you did not get that worksheet and you also should have an answer key for yourselves. Um, as well but um, students if for some reason you don't receive a worksheet please feel free to just jot your quiz answers down on the same paper with your exit question and so now we will begin our reading this one the setting is in los angeles teachers at garfield high school were winding down classes before lunch they, then they heard the startling sound of people running the halls, pounding on the classroom doors, walk out. They were shouting, walk out. Hmm. Students left classrooms and gathered in front of the school entrance. They held their clenched fists high. Viva la revolution. They called out education and eradication. It was just noon. It was just past noon on a sunny Tuesday, March 5th, 1968, the day a revolution began for Mexican Americans, people whose families came to the United States from Mexico. Soon protests began at two more high schools on the east side of Los Angeles, along with Garfield students at Roosevelt and Lincoln High Schools drew attention to rundown campuses lack of college preparation courses and teachers who were poorly trained racist <clears throat> excuse me teachers who were poorly trained racist racist or didn't care so this took place at garfield high roosevelt and lincoln high schools the other two followed suit after garfield started the protest protest fills fill students with hope. By the time the walkouts, sometimes called blowouts, peaked a week later, 22,000 students had stormed out of class. Some delivered passionate speeches, some clashed with police. Scenes of uprising filled the news. The East LA protests 50 years ago were the California version of the fury and hope that marked much of 1968. Mm. The protests focused national attention on a new force on the American political scene, the, Ch the Chicano movement. Chicano was once used as an insult. However, a new generation of Mexican Americans took it over. The younger Mexican Americans, Me Mexican Americans from big cities use Chicano with pride. 
Chicano. We caught the entire nation by surprise, said David Sanchez, founder of a group of Chicanos who called themselves the Brown Berets, partly for their unique hats. They were also similar to the U.S. Army's Green, Ber Green Berets. They fought for what they wanted. In 1968, the kids kicked the doors open, said Pete Martinez, a former teacher at Lincoln, struggling high schools in East L.A. In, 19, in 1968, Mexican-American students living east of downtown LA went to struggling, struggling high schools. The schools had some of the worst rates for dropouts or quitting school in the country. At Garfield, more than half of the students quit before graduating. At Roosevelt and Lincoln, about four of 10 students quit. Hmm. East Side schools were old and overcrowded, and the community had little political power to help make improvements. There were no Mexican Americans on the city council or the board of supervisors. Students who spoke Spanish felt trapped in schools as they were put in low level classes that led to low skilled, low paying, low skilled, low paying jobs. Protests of 1968 to those today. Protests of 1968, similar to those today. The protests surprised many, but they grew out of years of young Mexican Americans learning about social activism or making a positive change in the word. world is another, is the definition of activism, making positive changes in the world. Some learn at summer camps, some learn at churches, some learn at a coffee, at a coffee shop. Sanchez, who was 18 years old at the time, opened L.A. Perenia Coffee Shop. Uh, opened La Perenia Coffee Shop and formed the Brown Berets. In 1967, hours before a protest against police harassment, he bought hats like the ones on posters of Latin American revolutionary Che Guevara, Che Guevara, the Chicano youth for community action became the Brown Berets. The Brown Berets and the East LA students refused to wait for adults to act. This is similar to the high school students today from Parkland, Florida. After a mass killing at their school in February, the students organized protests to seize the gun control debate. The protests begin. Joseph Rodriguez, then a sophomore at Garfield High, recalls sitting in science class when someone banged on the door and yelled, walk out, walk out. My teacher took me in, looked me in the eyes, Rodriguez recalled, and said, I can see you're really interested in this stuff. You're free to go. Police in heavy armor arrived and ordered the students back to class. Most refused. Students carried American flags and signs reading, we demand schools that teach in school, not prison. The unrest continued for about a week and the school board eventually agreed to, to two demands, more teachers who could speak Spanish and English and smaller class sizes. Smaller classes allow students to receive more help from teachers. Increase in Mexican-American college students. A year after the protest, the number of Mexican-American students at the University of California, Los Angeles soared from 100 to 1,900. Over decades, college attendance by Mexican Americans also increased greatly throughout the United States. Chicano studies programs were founded. The Chicano, Chicano, Chicano studies programs were founded at colleges and universities across the nation. Okay. Still, perhaps the protest's greatest accomplishment was fostering in the Mexican-American community a sense of 
possibility and realization that a just cause, that a just cause sometimes requires speaking up. Thank you. Until that day, it never crossed my mind that Garfield High was run down or overcrowded and lagging behind public schools in wealthier white neighborhoods, said Rodriguez, who later became a prize winning writer at the San Jose Mercury News. All that changed after the blowouts. Great, great story, interesting and great article. And now we go to our activity quest, uh, section. And uh, question number one of our quiz, which sentence from the article shows Mexican-American students' main problems? A, soon protests began at two more high schools on the east side of Los Angeles. B, the schools had some of the worst rates for dropouts or quitting school in the country. C, they were no Mexican, there were no Mexican Americans on the city council or the board of supervisors or D, police in heavy armor arrived and ordered the students back to class. I will give you time to reflect on this and answer. You can pause the video here and um, answer your question and then we will answer collectively. And the question is that um, which sentence from the article shows Mexican American students' main, main problem? And here are all the options. And I will be right back. Okay, so let's review together. Um, which sentence from the article shows Mexican American students made problem? Our correct answer is B, correct? The um, schools had some of the worst rates for dropouts or quitting school in the country. That's a big, big problem. And so B is our correct answer here. We show our answer and there you have it, B. Two. Read the sentence, the section, protest fills students with hope. Select the sentence that most suggests there were other protests in the country at the same time as the ones in East LA. A, by the time the walkouts, sometimes called blowouts, peaked a week later, 22,000 students had stormed out of class. B, the East LA protests 50 years ago were the California version of the fury and hope that marked much of 1968. C, the protest focused national attention on a new force on the American political scene, the Chicano movement. Or D, in 1968, the kids kicked the doors open, said Pete Martinez, a former teacher at Lincoln. So which? sentence most suggests that there were other protests in the country at the same time as the ones in East LA. Here are our options. And where are the rest? Okay, and so which of um, these sentences most, most suggest that there were other protests in the country at the same time as the ones in East LA? Our correct answer again is B, and at that choice is the East LA protests 50 years ago were the California version of the fury, fury of the fury and the hope that marked much of 1968 the California version, meaning there were other versions going on as well because of the fury that marked 
much of 1968. So our correct answer is B, and let's show our answer. And there we have it. And <clears throat> question number three, which option explains two main ideas of the article? A, Mexican-American students in East LA protest, protested for better schools. The community improved in several ways due to their leadership. B, Mexican-American students felt trapped in low-level classes and low-paying jobs. They also had poorly trained or career, careless, poorly trained or careless teachers. C, students' protests in 1968 for better schools were similar to the student protests in 2018 for more gun control. Police in heavy armor told students to return to class. Or D, protests in California were led by the groups such as the Brown Berets. Many schools east of LA had been run down and overcrowded for a long time. So which option explains the two main ideas of the article? Let you reflect on that. Here are the rest of our options. Okay, so let's answer which option explains two main ideas of the article. The correct answer is A, Mexican American students in East LA protested for better schools. The community improved in several ways due to their leadership. And so that would be our correct answer. Let's show our answer. Correct answer is A. Question number four, which sentence from the article would be most important to include in a summary of the article? Is it A, teachers at Garfield High School were winding down classes before lunch? B, Viva La Revolution, they called out, oh, Revolution, they called out education, not eradication. C, it was just past noon on a sunny Tuesday, March 5th, 1968, the day a revolution began for Mexican Americans, people whose families come to the United States from Mexico. D, along with Garfield, students at Roosevelt and Lincoln High Schools drew attention to run down campuses, lack of college preparation courses, and teachers who were poorly trained racists or didn't, didn't care. Which of these is, would be most important to include in a summary of the article? Here are the options again. Where's the last option? Okay, so which sentence from the article would most be most important to include in a summary of the article? Our correct answer is D, correct? And um, D states, along with Garfield, students at Roosevelt and Lincoln High Schools drew attention to run-down campuses, lack of college preparation courses, and teachers who were poorly trained, racist, or didn't care. So let's show our answer here, and our correct answer is D. Question number five, how effective is this introduction at developing the topic of the 1968 student walkouts? A, is it very effective? It provides a vivid description of the protest and also explains their main purpose. B, very effective. It provides background about why individual students joined the protests for better schools. C, somewhat effective. It helps the reader visualize the first day of the protest, but does not explain why people protested. D, somewhat effective. It explains what happened during the protest, but does not explain who was affected. Okay, and so look over that. How effective is this introduction at developing the topic of the 1968 student walkouts? Let's look at number five. Here are the options. Oh, man. 
there's D. Okay, let's review together. How effective is this introduction paragraph at developing the topic of the 1968 student walkouts? We know our correct answer is A, because it is very effective. It provides a vivid description of the protest and also explains their main purpose. It gives us all the background information. Um, and so A is our correct answer. Let's show our answer and there's Right answer is A. Question number six. Read the paragraph from the section protests of 1968, similar to those today. The Brown Berets and other East LA students refuse to wait for adults to act. This is a similar, this is similar to the high school students today from Parkland, Florida after a mass killing at their school in February, the students organized protests to seize the gun control debate. How does this paragraph contribute to the article's overall, overall point? A, by demonstrating the contrast between student activism in Florida and California. B, by exploring the effects of the Brown Berets on other East LA student activists. C, by connecting the activism of the Mexican-American students to the students today, or D, by introducing the effects of student activism on the debate about gun control. So here's the paragraph again. How does this paragraph contribute to the article's overall points? Here are all our options. Okay, so that paragraph um, you just read, how does this, it contribute to the article's overall point? So we know our correct answer is C. By connecting the activism of the Mexican American students to the students today. And let's show our answer and our correct answer is C. Read the paragraph from the section, Increase in Mexican-American College Students. Until that day, it never crossed my mind that Garfield High was run down, overcrowded, and lagging behind public schools in wealthier white neighborhoods, said Rodriguez, who later became a prize-winning writer at the San Jose Mercury News. All that changed after the blowouts. Why did the author include this paragraph? A, was it to indicate that most students were not bothered by the issues in public schools? B, to repeat the problems that were being faced by students at Garfield High School? C, to emphasize how the protests changed people's thinking and perspective? Or D, to highlight how Rodriguez's role in the protests led to him winning many prizes? <clears throat> So here's the paragraph you can look over. I'll be right back. And so here are the options. Mm 
Okay, and so why did the author include this paragraph all about Rodriguez and how he didn't realize just how bad conditions were? And he went, um, well, until after the protest, and he went on to win a prize, prize-winning writer at the San Jose Mercury News. So why did the author include this paragraph? Our correct answer is C, to emphasize how the protest changed people's thinking and perspective, right? And that's what it did for Rodriguez because he didn't even realize just how bad things were until it was brought to his attention from the protest. So our correct answer was show in his seat. And there we have it. And our last question, the author wrote this article mostly to explain that the actions of the protesters in 1968 were revolutionary. What did the author do to illustrate this point in the article? A, the author carefully outlined the legal changes that the students wanted for the school and how they were able to achieve them. B, the author provides a few, a few examples of how Mexican-American schools and communities were improved as a result of the protest. C, the author compared the student protests in 1968 for better schools and the protests in 2018 for more gun control. Or D, the author developed a convincing argument in favor of teaching more about the history of the Mexican-American student social activism. And here is our question. Review over that. Why did the author, what did the author do to illustrate this point that um, him writing um, this article mostly to explain that the actions of the protesters in 1968 were revolutionary. How were they revolutionary? What did author do to illustrate this point in the article? Okay, and so I, uh, we look over the question um, our last quiz question, what did the author do to illustrate the point that the um, protests of 1968 were revolutionary? Our correct answer is B. The author provides a few examples of how Mexican-American schools and communities were improved as a result of the protests. So change did occur, making it a revolutionary action and so let's well let's show before we go leave show the answer for our last one and our correct answer there is b things were improved so that concludes our quiz and our activity section and now <clears throat> excuse me we will move on to an um exit question uh we read about this law this law article about student activism and protest. And so I would like to ask you, please now take out your paper that you set aside and jot down um, how do you feel about activism and protest? What are your thoughts on protest, on activism? And how do you feel it affect changes? if you feel that way at all. Do you feel it affects changes? Do you feel it's necessary? How do you feel about it? Just a few lines. And I will leave you with that. And when you uh, complete all of your work, please turn it in to your cottage staff. Cottage staff, if you can please, once you have collected all the students' work, um, please take, everything down to the PBX admin building and your help is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your support. And students, thank you for coming along on another reading um, comprehension lesson with me. I will see you guys really soon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Please stay safe and be well and be kind to each other. Till next time.